Hey friends, my name is Dasha. Welcome or welcome back to my channel and welcome to the 2021 mid-year book freakout tag. I love doing this tag. I love watching this tag. I did it last year when I just started my channel in case you're curious. Actually, maybe no, maybe don't watch that. <laughs> it was like one of the first videos on my channel. I love this tag. I think it's a great little mid-year checkpoint to kind of see what you've loved, what disappointed you, what was great. It's like a little highlight reel. So you know what? We're just gonna get right on into it. The first question is what is the best book you've read so far this year? And I mean, I called it back in January, guys. The Killing Moon by N.K. Jemisin, the first book in the Dreamblood duology. I read this back in January and I just thought it was absolutely incredible and beautiful and heart-wrenching. It is set in this ancient Egyptian inspired world and you're following several different people. You're following a priest from this religion that is in this world that is basically based on dreams and you're following a politician from a neighboring city and you're following just a few different people and it's just absolutely incredible. This book made me almost cry. It made me laugh. It made me like, I was just absolutely so, so into it. I've never read anything like this. And I should probably get around to reading the sequel, but I've just had so much love in my heart for this first one. I've never read anything like it. And I'm honestly more shocked that this is one of the like lesser known N.K. Jemisin works compared to some of her other series because this was just truly breathtaking and magnificent and I loved it with all my heart. I will also say though, in terms of nonfiction, Our Prisons Obsolete by Angela Davis has not left my mind. It was straight up just absolutely incredibly written. This is a very well researched and well articulated argument for prison abolition and Angela Davis manages to condense so much work into such a short book. It's about 125 pages and it's all just so well written. All her ideas are so well explained and she really makes you think with this and it's just truly incredible how much she was able to fit into such a tiny book and the impact that it's had. I've thought about it a lot. I've been able to connect it to some of my classes and to real life discussions and quite frankly, I think this is like a must read, uh, not even just in like in general, but I think like people in law schools should be reading this. I think that anyone in like social work, social sciences should be reading this. It's just absolutely breathtaking and insane. The next question is the best sequel you've read so far this year and honestly all the sequels I've read have been pretty disappointing so the bar is pretty low. I'm gonna go with A Dance of Dragons by George R. R. Martin. This is the fifth and last currently published book in the A Song of Ice and Fire series upon which A Game of Thrones was based. We all know this. Um, if you see my May wrap up, which I will link, I like completely love this. This was probably my favorite installment in the series aside from the first book. You just kind of get a lot of plot lines starting to kind of converge and really come to fruition. And it's just incredible to see. I flew through this. This is probably, I'm pretty sure this is the thickest one in the series. And I flew through this faster than I did half of the other books. Like I was hooked. I could not stop reading it. Everything was just so immaculately done in this that I was I was just hooked. Even the characters that I liked maybe a little bit less or just didn't care for, I was like, you know what? Like, I'm still enjoying myself. I know that I have to get through this to read to like the characters I like, but even when I was reading from that POV, I was like, honestly, this is like the slaps. This is so good. So the next question is a new release that you haven't read yet, but you would like to. I'm pretty bad at keeping up with new releases. Uh, I definitely know that I would like to read Ariadne by Jennifer Saint. This is another Greek retelling and I am a Ho for Greek retellings. We know this at this point. I've also been looking forward to Hall of Smoke by H.M. Long and The Mask of Mirrors by M.A. Carrick. Those two were on my radar for a while and the reviews that I have seen, although they're not numerous, I have seen good reviews and I like finding a little underrated gem. Uh, Hall of Smoke is like Viking inspired and Mask of Mirrors is kind of like a underground society sort of thing which is always like up my alley so and they're both fantasy all three are technically fantasy so i'm still hoping to get to those i've had so i bought mask of mirrors on ebook because it was on sale and i have hall of smoke on hold at the library and i've just been pushing it back because my tbrs have been so packed but I'm like, I really would like to get to them. The next question is your most anticipated releases for the second half of the year. And there's definitely two that I'm like super pumped for. So the first one is The Bone Shard Emperor, which is the sequel to The Bone Shard Daughter. The Bone Shard Daughter was like one of my favorite books of last year. 
one of my favorite fantasy books of all time. I just thought it was incredible and beautiful and so well written. And I'm really, really excited to see where the story goes. And I'm probably gonna pre-order it once I get a little bit more disposable cash. I'm not sure when it comes out. I will absolutely put the date uh, on the screen so you can see for yourself. But the first book followed um, a few different POVs in this kind of <laughs> aquatic empire. Like there was a bunch of islands and they all had their own like migration uh, patterns. And the world's magic was based on bone shards that were taken from the citizens and implanted into these artificial constructs and you inscribed like coding almost on the bone shards and that made them work and talk and move and uh, conduct business and you know they could follow commands and stuff so it was a really interesting concept it was really well executed it was just a lot more uh, personal than I thought it would be it just had a lot of these really beautiful touching moments and I absolutely loved it so I can't wait for the sequel and then the other one is tentative we're not sure if we're getting it but it's the fourth book in the Gentleman Bastard sequence which is the Thorn of Emberlane I believe it is um, this is an adult high fantasy also I read the first book last year I'm going to be spoiler alert rereading the rest of the series the rest of the year uh, in preparation for the fourth book because I completely fell in love with it you're following Locke who is a thief and he's the leader of a band of thieves and they steal from the rich and just hoard it all because it's fun to them and they're really good at it but there's a lot of like political undercurrents happening and I'm really really excited to blow through the currently released books in order to prepare myself for October when the fourth one releases knock on wood because I just absolutely fell in love with this when I read it and I can't wait to join like the party when the fourth one does get released and everyone else is talking about it so hopefully it happens, who knows? So the next question is the most disappointing reads of the year so far. So the first one, again, if you saw my May wrap up, you will have seen this on it, but it is The Fair and the Nightingale by Katherine Arden. I DNF this like 65 pages in. Uh, this is an adult historical fantasy set in Russia. We follow Vasilisa who can see these like folk spirits, but then when her new stepmother arrives to her house, she bans Vasilisa from seeing the folk spirits and then some malevolent spirits begin to gather. How many times can I say spirits? Who knows? I felt very apathetic towards this and it really sucked for me. It was disappointing because everyone loves this. It's either like people give it like five star favorite book status or it's like two, three stars. It was kind of disappointing and bland. And I really fell into that camp of like, if I'd finished this, it would have been like a two star read. And that didn't feel fair uh, to give it that low of a rating. So I just decided to DNF it. It is extremely, really, like just so disappointing. <laughs> the other disappointing read was when I finished quite recently. It was a buddy read with Ray and Robin and we read Jade City. I, listen, okay, let me start this by saying I still gave it three stars. I thought it was decent. I just expected to love it so much more than I actually did because it had all of these things that in theory I should like. It had this kind of like crime gang family aspect. It had a lot of political things going on. The magic system was cool. Jade is a substance that makes you almost like superhuman. You can perform all these crazy things, but only certain people can wield it. It takes a lot of talent. So all of these things combined would have ideally worked for me, but something about it didn't click for me. And I was ultimately left really disappointed. Not to say that I think the book is bad, it just didn't work for me and I'm like, I don't know why it sucks. I was really hoping it would, but that's kind of just what happened and I'm ultimately really, really disappointed because I had really high hopes. Actually, I thought of another nonfiction one. The Red Market by Scott Carney. This book promises to be so much more exciting than it is and I really thought that this would be more in depth and not just like kind of the surface level nonsense that it was because this book was supposed to be about uh, bone thieves and child traffickers and like blood banks and organ trafficking and all of these like really sketchy underworld things that again I'm always a sucker for but then it was kind of, it left me very unsatisfied. I still gave the book like a 3.5 star rating. I just thought it was kind of it didn't leave me like as into it as other books I read this year did. It didn't leave me like excited and like I want to go research more. It was a good starting off point for research, but the fact that the book did leave me disappointed kind of left a bad taste in my mouth. So I didn't go and do further research because I was just ultimately not impressed and really disappointed. So the next question to kind of flip that on its head is the most surprising books of the year. And again, I have a few. The Joy Luck Club by Amy Tan. I read this because I wanted to participate in the Gilmore Girls book club, which I'm not even sure what's happening with them. They haven't um, uploaded to their Twitter in a while. But anyways, I read the group book. I was really excited for it. This is basically like a, 
I, I guess you could call it like a multi-generational contemporary about like the Chinese American immigrant experience and mother-daughter relationships and the reason this surprised me so much is because I had no expectations going into it. I don't read contemporaries and I know it's kind of like a modern classic but I just didn't have any kind of feelings toward it when I went into it. I just like, it was short. I thought I'd just pick it up and read it. And I ended up just like absolutely loving it and connecting to it. And I thought it was just beautiful, beautiful. Again, May wrap up, you can go see my full thoughts there, but they're pretty incoherent because I was just babbling about how much I connected to it from the, like the immigrant experience aspect and the mother daughter aspect and the kind of first generation immigrant and like, immigrating into a Western country sort of thing. I'm sure you could argue Russia is a Western country, but there's certain things that are not quite the same. Regardless, I babbled on a lot about that book and I absolutely loved it and I cried <laughs> and it was just stunning. So that was definitely a surprise. Another one is The Devil All the Time by Donald Ray Pollock. This was a American Gothic horror following a few people in a small town and I just didn't know what to expect going in. I think I picked it up kind of on a whim because I'd heard a few booktubers give it really good reviews and I just didn't really know what to expect because the only thing I'd heard about it was it was just like a bunch of bad people doing bad things. And ooh, did it deliver on that promise. I don't know, something about this book just kept me coming back to it and thinking about it and just how like raw it was and like all of the melange of themes going on in it was just fantastic. And this definitely came out of left field because when it comes to horror, I thought I would prefer like more typical horror, but this was a bit more subtle. It was like I said, like American Gothic horror, which is a bit more quiet and a little bit more realistic. And it was just mind blowing, mind blowing. So the next question is favorite new author that you discovered this year. And while I don't think I have any new like favorites. There's definitely a few authors that I want to go back and read all of their backlist. So for example, Angela Davis, I want to read all her other stuff now. I love the way she writes. I love the ideas that she presents and how succinctly and powerfully she presents them all. I'd read anything she writes. Same with Stephen Graham Jones, who wrote The Only Good Indians. I really, really enjoyed that book and he has quite a few other horror books. And I think he does that kind of classic horror creeping sense of dread really well and gore quite well uh, and he has this really vivid imagery in his books that's just fantastic so i can't wait to go back and read his backlist and finally robin hobb i read assassin's apprentice in may i liked it it was a very weird reading experience because at first i couldn't figure out why i wanted to even keep reading it but by the end you realize you're so attached to these characters so i will be absolutely reading through Everything she's written, um, I have the next two books in this series on the way and I'll probably just read through everything because I'm intrigued. I am here for the ride. Something about her writing is extremely compelling. The next question is newest fictional crush and while I don't get these like often, honestly Nikolai from the Grishaverse is chef's kiss of a man. I just really enjoyed his character. I thought he was not only comic relief, but he had a lot of personality and a lot of backstory. And he just, he was just like a, I mean, come on, who doesn't like Nikolai? The next question is your new favorite character. There was no one that immediately came to mind, but I will say Burridge from this fucking book was I, mm, mm. The characters in here are so complex and they're weird and you don't want to like them but they fucking grow on you. The fool from this book too, uh, even fits up to a certain point. You just want to protect him and make sure nothing goes wrong but everything goes wrong to him in this fucking series and from, from what I've heard the rest of the, the world is just always very mean to Fitz and I just... I want to protect everyone in this book. I really fell in love. Robin Hobb's strength is her character, so like it's not a surprise, but I'm usually not a character-driven reader and somehow I just, I care for everyone so much and I'm really, really worried for how shit's gonna go down in the subsequent books, not gonna lie. The next question is a book that made you cry and like I mentioned before, The Joy Luck Club. I was not expecting it. It crept up on me because it's told in like a series of vignettes. Um, premise of the Joy Luck Club is that a woman goes to the Joy Luck Club, which is a group of people that have immigrated from China and into the US and they get together and they play mahjong and they bring a bunch of food and they kind of reconnect with their Chinese culture while they're in America. And so the daughter of one of the people who founded it goes to the club after her mother dies 
to kind of reconnect with her culture and connect with these people that have all these stories about her mother and about China. A real essential focus of it was just the, the absolute like strength and resilience and love of mothers and how they would go to the ends of the earth for their kids and how they always want the best for their kids even though it's really hard for them to show it sometimes and it's just the way it creeps up on you at the end the way it made me fucking cry because i just i like so much emotion swelled up inside of me i could not help myself it was just so touching and so beautiful and i connected to it so so much and i i didn't expect to but like i straight up was like tearing up sitting there hiccuping like i had to stop working because i had it on audiobook and I was trying to do some like some admin tasks at work, you know, pretty mindless stuff. And I literally had to like stop and just sit there and listen to it. And I was just blown away. Oh my God, Whew. it's a lot. The next question is the book that made you happy. And this was a hard one. Um, I came to the realization that I don't read a lot of happy books. <laughs> I read a lot of like dark fantasy and like nonfiction about serious issues and horror or is not happy, but I think I found two answers and I'm gonna explain myself because the, fir <laughs> the first one is These Violent Delights by Chloe Gong. Hear me out. This is not inherently a happy book, but this made me feel a lot of things while I was reading it. This brought me back to my high school days reading books that were like just hit you in the feels you know like when we were all talking about feels back in the day you know when you would like when you were reading like hunger games for the first time it's not a happy book but when certain things would happen you would just be like holy shit's going down oh my god Peta and katniss oh my god like these moments and that's kind of how i felt reading this i was transported back to that kind of like fandomy stage I was just really vibing with this book. I was like flying through it because I was just hooked and I needed to know what happened. And I hadn't felt that in a long time, honestly. So I was just really happy reading this book in terms of the experience that I had reading it. And then the other book I wanna mention is Freakonomics by two guys named Steven. This is a nonfiction book from the perspective of an economist who examines issues and tries to kind of apply economists logic to them. So for example, he goes, it sounds fucking whack if you try to explain it. He argues that Roe and Wade has had the biggest impact on crime statistics across the board in America, other than like anything else. He argues that that was the reason that crime rates started to decline. Uh, he also argues that, for example, what you name your child possibly have a bigger impact on your life than anything else your parents do, for example. It's just these really wacky concepts, but he examines them from this kind of, I don't know, the way he, he applies that kind of economist's logic of cause and effect is just mind-boggling. Uh, the way that it has changed how I view certain things and just reading it made me so happy because I was just like, holy shit, is this true? Like, what the fuck? I've never heard of this before. Um, like, this is wild. Like, looking at the stats they presented and looking at some of the charts they pulled up and made. And like, it was just, it was a wild reading experience. I think all of it should obviously be taken with a grain of salt because it's just kind of an exploration of how you can apply economics to different situations and issues and look at them a different way. But it was just really, really interesting to read. It was fun to read and I would definitely say it made me happy. I guess in a weird way. <laughs> the next question is the most beautiful book you bought this year. And honestly, I struggled because I've just been buying not that many like nice books. Like last year I bought Mythos and that was like astounding to me. Like that was the most beautiful thing I've ever owned. Um, I have a few answers for this. More just like, I really appreciate the cover. I don't have anything like spectacular like I did last year. I really like this cover for The Republic of Thieves by Scott Lynch. This is the third book in the Gentleman Bastard sequence and it is just spectacular. I love this illustration. I think it is so stinking beautiful. I also really love the cover for Assassin's Apprentice. I've bought the rest of the books in this edition. First of all, the Canadian and I think the American editions too are fucking hideous. They only come in these like teeny tiny mass market paperbacks and they have this like hideous illustration of what I think is supposed to be Fitz on the cover but the problem is Fitz is not white in the books yet all the fan art and the official cover art for Assassin's Apprentice has Fitz depicted as this like white boy and I'm very confused and I would like to know why um, because it's right in the book that like everyone from the Farseer family 
has a darker complexion. I don't understand, I don't understand. But yeah, that really bothers me. And just overall, I love the design of these covers. I love how Robin Hobb books look on people's shelves when they have the whole collection. Cause like the spines are all beautiful. They all match. They just stand out. They're punchy. They got the beautiful foiling. I love the dark blue. It looks like it was drawn by someone's hand, like with a nice calligraphy pen. This even looks like it was colored in by marker. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. And also, I recently bought uh, Anthony Bourdain's book, World Travel. This is his most recent one. It was started a little bit before he died. So, <laughs> fun fact about me. Um, I don't care for celebrities that much. I don't care that much for like actors or actresses because I don't watch that much TV or that many movies. There's a couple of like artists I care about. Um, I mean, I can't say I don't because I have like album artwork from one of my favorite artists tattooed on my back. But I don't like particularly like care for anyone that deeply. Anthony Bourdain's death hit me so fucking hard because he is someone that I just genuinely looked up to. His approach to life and travel and food was just so beautiful and I'm just really sad that he's not with us because he is a joy of a person and I'm just really, yeah, really sad. So um, I decided to pick this up. I was honestly hoping it was gonna be more from him, but it seems like they kind of just took quotes he said on from across his various shows and kind of plugged them in. Like the idea was his and the, um, What's her name? Lori Wooliver. Uh, the idea was theirs, like he participated in it, he kind of planned it out, but ultimately it was Lori that finished the book, which really fucking sucks because I was hoping it was a lot more from him. But we're talking about beautiful books. Um, first of all, I love this cover. I think it is so spot on for, it's, it's Anthony. He's eating a bowl of noodles on a street and that is where he's happiest and honestly, like me too. Also, if you have not like, seen it in person go and pick it up it is like heavy it is a beautiful book it's printed on this like fabulous thick not environmentally friendly paper and the other thing that i say makes it like really beautiful is that it's got fantastic illustrations in it across the whole thing and i quite frankly just like really really enjoy them i i think it's beautiful i think it is a really good way to commemorate him I wish it was more of him, but yeah, I was really, really excited to pick this up because I, I love, I love my man Anthony, what can I say? And then the final question is, what books do you want to read before the end of the year? And, um, oh boy, I have made a video of my books to read for 2021. I will link that in case you are curious, but a little you know, overview for the ones that I want to read going forward. Obviously, Battle Royale, I don't, I, the size is putting me off. I really want to read it though. We knew this one was coming. Say it with me, folks. I want to finish The Count of Monte Cristo this year. I am literally so close to the end. I could finish this. I sectioned it off. I could finish this in a month. No problem. Three weeks, uh, four weeks, I can't count. Four weeks, like 150 pages a week. It's doable. It's possible. I just... And I have to finish it. I can't let this drag on into 2022. That would just be embarrassing. I just finished rereading An Ember in the Ashes earlier this month so I could continue on with the series. So obviously I would like to read A Torch Against the Night because I physically own it. But I also have A Reaper at the Gates on my iPad on ebook. So I would really like to possibly finish the series this year. That would be nice. I want to start a few more fantasy series. Uh, the Final Empire with Brandon Sanderson. Again, I talked about this one in that video, but I have it on my TBR for June, but it's like tentative. I don't know if I'll get to it, but, but like I really want to start reading Brandon Sanderson this year. Also, honestly, like I have the world, Joy Abercrombie, Rage of Dragons, Deadly Education, uh, Fellowship of the Ring. I just want to start some fantasy series this year. I mentioned it earlier, but The Gentleman Bastards, I want to reread the first one and then read the other two to get to the fourth book if it does release this year. I would like to finish the Dreamblood duology, read The Shadowed Sun. I really wanna read it because I really enjoyed it. And then just a few nonfiction picks, uh, Small Kits in Your Eyes by Caitlin Doty. This was on my five-star prediction list. I picked up a copy because I finished my Game of Tomes board, so I allowed myself to buy a few books, so I picked it up. If you have not seen my five-star predictions or my Game of Tomes TBR game, those will of course be linked, but I'm really excited for this one and I really want to get to it this year. Honestly, all the books on that five-star prediction list I would like to get to this year. Who knows if it'll happen, but I'm really excited for this one. I'd like to read Blackwater by Jeremy Scahill. This is uh, about, uh, like Blackwater is a big like private mercenary army 
that goes into conflicts all over the world. And this is like modern, uh, goes into conflicts all over the world to just like fight for whoever pays them more. It's kind of sus, but I think that's the point of it. And I think I'm really gonna like it. Pretty sure this one was on my list last year, but Hotel Scarface by Robin Farzad. This is the hotel that inspired the movie Scarface. It's about like crazy cocaine use in the 80s in Miami and all this fun stuff. My boyfriend actually read it since and he really liked it. He said it was a super quick read and it was really fun. Um, and I kind of like that it is a, a quicker read. There's like photos and stuff. So I think this would be really fun as like a little palette cleanser between some heavier nonfiction. And this one was definitely on one of these kinds of lists last year. Uh, the Human Condition by Hannah Arendt. I've been rereading this for a while now because it is such a dense book it is a kind of political science slash philosophy book so you really have to take your time and like digest everything um, which is why it has so many tabs because there's just so many interesting concepts in here but I would like to just be done with it it is haunting me from my Goodreads currently reading page and I am sick of it and I don't want to see it anymore and then finally honestly I'd love to finish up the whole Farseer trilogy this year I don't know if it will happen but like I said I have the other two books on the way and it would be really nice to kind of be able to get through the whole thing this year and then next year I could start with the Life Ship Traders series which is the next one in this world so that would also be cool. Obviously this list is completely unreasonable. I will not finish all of it. There's a ton of other books I would like to read. And obviously because these were mainly from two genres, fantasy and nonfiction, which is what I own the most of, I would like to also read horror in between there and thrillers and stuff. I just don't buy thrillers because I think it is a waste of my money because once you read them, you're not gonna wanna read them again. I'm not gonna get to all of these, but I am excited for all of them in like the near future but who knows what will actually happen because I'm terrible at sticking to my TBRs. That is it for this tag. Like I said, there are a bunch of videos that I've mentioned. They will be linked so you can go and kind of check those out, including last year's mid-year book freakout tag, my list of books to read for 2021, my five-star predictions, my game of tomes, and my wrap-ups where I talk about some of these books. My social media will also be linked down below. You guys can always come talk to me there. If you would like to do this tag, this is me officially tagging you, even though I think everyone just does this one on their own now. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.